How are you today? I've been a little busy this morning. That's why I'm not on usually early, early. <laughs> you know, appointments for your car to get looked at or certain things that needs to get done. Since I drive an older car, I drive, drive a 2013. So um, things are going to happen. But it's paid for, so it's worth, right? It's worth the work. Anyway. So, um, I'm ready to calm down now and do our reading for the day. Today, we actually follow the readings daily from the Word Among Us. And today, um, it's opened up to Philippians. And I'm not that familiar with Philippians, so that's a good thing. We're going to do Philippians um, 2, 6 through 11. Who being in very nature God, did not consider equally with God something to be used to his own advantage. Let me read that again. <laughs> that was a little confusing. Who being in very nature God, who being very nature God, did not consider equally with God, something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in, in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Wow, that was very powerful. That's a really good reading. Um, earlier today, we were reading Anne Catherine Emmerich, um, the book club, with Hen. And this is the Holy Spirit in work right here, right now, because we were talking about how while Jesus was walking on his way to the baptism, he was planting little seeds here and there in all these different towns from Anne Catherine Emmerich's visions. And he himself was telling the people, people, you're expecting the Messiah to be, to, you know, be a king like David, to come down with all these, this like, money and gold and to be like this big thing but no the son of god which was himself is coming down as a humble person a servant and he was telling them what to expect because he was telling them i am he you know, he was he was getting them ready to what to really expect. I mean, it was written in the Psalms, wasn't it? It was, I mean, it was written in the Old Testament what was going to be expected. He was going to be born where he was going to be born. He was going to be born of a virgin. He was, and everything that happened to him. So he was letting them know. And here in our reading today, it kind of coincides with the book club this morning, which you guys are going to hear it tomorrow because uh, Hen likes to post them on Friday. So today's book club, you'll hear tomorrow. Um, this is talking about that. It's saying that rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself. Humility, meekness, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, 
even death on a cross. So he followed God's wishes. Thy, thy will be done. So on the commentary here, it says, Often people excuse selfishness, pride, or evil by claiming their rights. They think, I can cheat on this test, after all. I deserve to pass this class, or I can spend all the money on myself. I worked hard for it, or I can get an abortion. I have the right to control my own body. But as believers, we should have a different attitude, one that enables us to lay aside our rights in order to serve others. If we say we follow Christ, we must also say we want to live as he lived. We should develop this attitude of humility as we serve even when we are not likely to get recognition for our efforts. Are you selfishly clinging to your rights or are you willing to serve? We need to be willing to serve and we need to be willing to live the gospel, not just read the book, but to live the book, to follow in Christ's footsteps. We can't just pick and choose little readings that we like in the Bible to fit us. We need to read the readings and accept everything they say, even though we don't like it. We need to accept it. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, my brother in Christ. How are you this morning? I hope you're good. I hope you're having a fabulous day here in Florida. It's so nice and sunny today. And it's not too hot. It's not too hot. So it also says, death on a cross crucifixion was the form of capital punishment that Romans used for notorious criminals. It was excruciatingly painful and humiliating. Prisoners were nailed or tied to a cross and left to die. Death might not come for several days, and it usually came by suffocation when the weight of the weakened body made breathing more and more difficult. Jesus died as one who was cursed. Galatians 3.13 How amazing that the perfect man should die this most shameful death so that we would not have to face eternal punishment. Amen. Yeah, these are the commentaries on the readings. Also, for people that aren't used to the Bible. So we very well know this, but they wrote it because some people are just reading the Bible for the first time, and they're trying to understand it. So that's why I love commentary Bibles, because underneath they have the actual um, reading, and then they have an, an explanation of it. And we very well know the whole um, passion of the Christ very well, because as Catholics, we're the ones that have the, um, the crucifix instead of just the cross. Um, we believe in seeing Christ on that crucifix, because that's the whole reason of our faith was what he did for us, right? When he died on that cross, you know, that's that's the unselfish, humble um, love he had for us that God still has for us. So, um, yeah, if we want to go into, it said here that it was excruciating. Yeah, we know all that. And there's a lot more to talk about that, but we'll do that during Lenten season, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's a beautiful day in Philly. Yes, well, I'm glad to hear that. No heat and humidity. That's good, so enjoy it. Maybe a little gardening, Joe. A nice walk around the neighborhood. Um, it says here, 2 9, 11, At the last judgment, even those who are condemned will recognize Jesus. Yeah, that's where it says every knee will bow. Bend. That means even in hell, even down there, everybody's going to be bending the knee to Jesus because Jesus is God. 
authority and right to rule. People can choose to regard Jesus as Lord now as a step of willing and loving commitment or be forced to acknowledge him as Lord when he returns. Christ may return at any moment. Are you prepared to meet him? Amen. We need to be ready. That's why we don't know. That's why God doesn't want us knowing. He doesn't want us to go to fortune tellers, to go to mystics, to, well, not mystics. Well, mystics that are approved by the church, like visions and that kind of thing. If it's approved by the church, we got to be very careful. If it's approved by the church, it's okay to read about it and to, like Anne Catherine Emmerich, she was beautified in 2004 by St. Paul John II. So we know that her visions have been historically proven correct and all this other stuff. But there are others that are not. So we've got to be very careful. And God does not want us dealing with anything to do with fortune tellers or tarot cards or, you know, all that kind of stuff is not good. And it's, you know, and it's in a lot of places in the Bible. One of them being the story of, remember Saul, when he went in the cave and he wanted, he he called uh, some kind of a witch or something, I don't know what it was, um, to call the dead and he called Elijah. And Elijah came and he's like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be calling me. You're, this is not allowed. You're not supposed to be calling us. And Saul said something like, this was King Saul. Remember King Saul and David? David later took over because he died on, you know, in combat. And his son was um, David's best friend. But anyway, yeah, he said, you know, you're not supposed to be doing this. You know you're going to die tomorrow. And he's like, oh, my goodness, really? Oh, my God. So he freaked out. And he wouldn't eat. And, and you know, he was freaked out because he was going to die the next. We're not meant to know this. We're not meant. We're not. We're not prepared mentally to know the future and, you know, all this. God doesn't want us to know it. And so because he wants us to have faith, he wants us to trust he wants us to pray. He wants us to come together with him like Jesus did. Jesus showed us the way into everything. Even though he knew what was happening, he knew everything. He still prayed to his heavenly father. And for hours he would do that. He would go away in seclusion sometimes, not even want to be followed. He'd say, leave me alone for a little bit. I need to go pray to my father. He was showing them what they need to do, which was us. We're today's disciples. He's showing us what we need to do. We need to go and pray in seclusion to our Heavenly Father like he did. Amen. So, yeah, that was the reading today. What a good reading, right? It started kind of weird. I had to read it twice. But you know why? Because it started at 6, and I should have went back and read 5. Because... If I would have just read a sentence before, it kind of made that paragraph better. In 5, it says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equally with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. So basically, that thing that sounded kind of weird because I cut it, it was cut off. I didn't put the first sentence in front of it. It's basically saying instead of being coming down from heaven and being divine like he could have been, he chose to be human 100%. He chose to suffer. He chose to show us the way living like us, among us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, King of the universe, for sending your only beloved Son to us to show us, to teach us the way to walk on this earth. 
on this life that is not forever. Thank you, Lord. Continue guiding us, continue strengthening us to be more like Christ so that we can deserve our eternal heaven. So we can deserve you forever and ever and ever in the new Jerusalem. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, yes. So let's do our little reading now in the Word Among Us, the Word Among Us, the little devotional after the reading of the day. Exaltation on the Cross, Philippians 2, 6, 11. God greatly exalted him. Philippians 2, 9. As Catholics, we place crucifixes everywhere, around our necks, on the walls of our home, and above the altar of every church. But like any familiar object, we can get used to seeing the image of Christ crucified, that it loses its impact. That's why we need a special feast like today so that we can reflect on the immensity of Jesus' sacrifice and the salvation it has accomplished for us. Scholars believe that today's second reading was probably taken from a hymn sung by the early Christians. Let's use the words of this hymn to offer Jesus, who is now greatly exalted in heaven, our own hymn of praise and adoration. Jesus, you are fully God, yet you become a man in order to save us. What did this cost you? You emptied yourself and took the form of a slave, all out of love for me. What humility this required, and yet you gladly took on your father's mission become because you knew that it was the only way to give me a share of your divine nature. Jesus, thank you for so great and weighty a gift. Jesus, you became obedient to death, even death on a cross. It wasn't enough for you to take on our human nature. No, you had to experience the fate of every human being, death itself, and a tortured, painful, humiliating one at that. But you were the only one who could save us. So you willingly took our sins to the cross and reconciled us to the Father. Jesus, I praise and exalt you for your sacrifice, one that I don't deserve and could never repay you for. Jesus, your Father bestowed on you the name that is above every name. Today, with all those in heaven and on earth, I bend my knee and confess you as my Lord. Your cross defeated sin and death. Now, even when I do sin, I know for certain that I can repent and receive your forgiveness. Jesus, I praise and exalt you, for by your holy cross you have redeemed me, and not only me, but all who have ever called upon your name. Jesus, may every cross I see remind me of all that you have done for me. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yes, definitely. Every crucifix we see. Let's not ever get used to seeing his body nailed on that cross. Let's not ever get used to that. That's every time we see that crucifix. Jesus nailed on that cross. Let us remember and realize what he did for us. So when we're ready to complain and we're ready to be unhappy in this life, we can remember that. And we can say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. We are unworthy of what you did for us. Help us be more like you. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Good morning, Maria. Good morning. Nice you joined us. Thanks for joining. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you all kindly and give you peace and love and faith and courage to be like Christ out there in the world. Courage to preach Christ crucified like the apostles did with all of our heart and our and our soul with passion and protection out there. Amen. Bye guys. I'll see you later God willing. I'm going to try to get my my iPad to work because um there's this reading that we need to really understand. And I'm still trying to get a way to explain it to people, to help people that don't understand this reading. <sighs> to get them to understand it a little bit better. Little by little, by rereading a reading and by looking at the right commentaries, which Hen is helping me with, looking for the right commentaries on the readings in the Bible, we can understand them ourselves and then later share them with everybody else. Because if we're not understanding something and if something is hard for us to understand in the Bible, that means it's probably hard for somebody else. But some people don't want to say they don't get it. <laughs> or maybe some people might get it differently. So seeing the point of view of other people in certain readings in the Bible help us to understand it better ourselves, right? Isn't it when you reread a reading in the Bible more than once and you repeat read it every single, like, you know, the Lenten season, we read the same part of the Passion of the Christ. But yet, every time I... Every Lenten season I go through and I read these readings that I'm used to, I get a different insight over it. That's the Holy Spirit, which is giving you the wisdom that we're praying for. I always pray for wisdom to understand God's word better, to get to know him better. And he's given it to us. But what do we got to do to get it? We got to dive into the Bible to get it, right? We need to question each other. And we need to share. Love you guys. Bye-bye.